At Tumut in the Snowy Mountains, John Lata is walking away from his decades-long career as a paramedic. I had to front the uh, paramedicine board and they sent me an email on Monday. And all they say in the, in the letter is that you can't act as a paramedic, you, you, you're suspended. The Paramedicine Council has suspended John following complaints he spread misinformation about the COVID vaccine, which he denies. He's also Deputy Mayor of the Snowy Valleys Council. I'm quite prepared to take the risk that if I get COVID that I will, I will respond from it and, uh, and have natural immunity. Do you accept that, particularly in your case as a paramedic, your personal decision not to vaccinate may be placing vulnerable patients at risk? Well, no, I don't accept that. Like John Lata, about 5% of paramedics across New South Wales remain unvaccinated, despite a looming deadline to get the jab. Three hours drive west in the town of Finlay, 7.30 is confirmed that five out of six ambulance paramedics are refusing the COVID vaccine. The move towards mandatory vaccination is really about making sure that our health system is as strong as it can be, that we reduce any risk of transmission uh, in our facilities. Unvaccinated paramedics are just a fraction of the vaccination headache facing public health services in the state. According to their own figures, 7% of all clinical staff in the state's public health system, including nurses, remain unvaccinated. The state's Deputy Chief Health Officer, Dr Marianne Gale, has downplayed fears that could cripple an already stretched workforce. Those uh, pockets of, of people who may uh, not be vaccinated, we're working through those issues and we will manage and we will make sure that services and care for patients is not disrupted. In Daniloquin Hospital, two staff members have told us that 10 nurses there are still refusing to vaccinate. It's a small hospital. Uh, they're saying that there are fears that the maternity ward may need to shut down as a result of those further staff losses. Look, absolutely, in, in particularly in smaller areas, those are real concerns. But I am confident with the network system that we have that there are solutions to those problems. In a statement, the local health district said maternity services will continue with minimal impact and work is underway to employ more staff. It's a problem being felt across the whole country. In aged care, the federal government set September 17th as the deadline for all workers to get mandatory vaccinations. In an industry already struggling to recruit workers, some care providers have lost staff over it. We probably had around 10, 10 to 12 people resign who um, just weren't willing to, to have the vaccination and that's a right that we, we have to respect. Whedon operates 21 aged care homes across New South Wales and Queensland with a workforce of nearly 3,000 employees. Our role is to protect our vulnerable residents. So, um, I, you know, I'm disappointed to see people leave. However, again, it's, it's personal choice. Whedon's aged care home at Kyogo in northern New South Wales has lost four staff. Losing four team members does definitely have a knock-on effect. Most team members were very good at what they did and we do miss them, but it does put additional pressure on the team. Nurse Kira Lord says getting the jab is the least she can do to protect her patients. If I can take an injection, a COVID vaccination or a flu vaccination or any other injection that ensures that I absolutely do my best to keep my clients safe and my, and my community safe, then I will do that any day. While most health workers opt for the jab, others are fighting it in the court. One of them is John Lata. I'm hoping that we'll, we'll win and we'll stop this mandatory, mandatory uh, compulsion of, of, of all workers to, to be vaccinated. What about in terms of your role as Deputy Mayor? Do you appreciate that you also have a responsibility to protect the community from COVID? And at the moment, you're promoting a position that's very much against the current public health orders. 
Well, I, no, I don't. I don't agree with that. Uh, I'm not. I'm not promoting a position that's at odds with the health orders. I, I, I'm promoting a position that affects me and affects thousands of other workers who don't want a vaccine. Lawyer Hayden Stevens specialises in employment and industrial law. He says some of the cases before the courts, also being brought by police officers, construction workers and teachers, are unlikely to succeed. These are very, very difficult cases in my opinion, not least that they seek to challenge these matters on constitutional grounds. Um, I would put it as poor prospects of success. Even as record numbers of Australians are getting vaccinated, researchers have reported rising levels of anti-vaccination propaganda on social media. One study found a 280% increase in anti-vax group membership on Facebook. Anti-vaccine sentiment is certainly nothing new, but the pandemic really offered these groups a way to expand their audience and expand their message. Ariel Bogle is an analyst of online misinformation. She says anti-vaccine groups use trusted members of the public to bolster their message. Healthcare workers uh, really occupy a position of trust and credibility in our society and so even a vocal minority of those voices is extremely useful to the anti-vaccine movement. Not all those with fears about vaccinations have held out. Aged care worker Charmaine Rakanazi manages retirement homes for uniting. I, uh, I was hesitant to have the vaccine. What would happen to me if, if you know, I was one of those statistics that perhaps it didn't work so well on? Last month, everything changed when Charmaine caught COVID. It really hit me like a freight train. It was, uh, it was horrible and each, each day it got worse. You just think if we if we come out of this, you know, because there's that very real fear that, you know, that could happen, you don't, you know, um, that we wanted to, you know, spread the message, I guess, about uh, getting a COVID vaccination. One of Charmaine's fellow workers at Uniting is challenging the vaccine mandate in the Supreme Court. Charmaine hopes to persuade unvaccinated colleagues to follow her lead. My final piece is to get vaccinated. I certainly wouldn't want uh, to wish COVID on anybody. It's, it's a horrible, horrible disease. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.